thank you again for coming, all all three of you. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, Rob, because um, I like people to explain their own thing they're doing. Give everybody a little background on yourself real quick before we go into the panel discussion. I'll go down the line because you're at the top. Well, uh, basically, Rob, uh, Robert, Lewis, whatever, but the King Moves brand is what I'm pushing right now, which is basically just information, y'all. We're just um, trying to trying to help everybody get informed, you know. Whatever I find when I'm digging, I, I, I share it. If I see one of y'all share something dope, I'm sharing it. And the point is simply, man, awareness. So once you understand what all has happened to us, we know what we need to do to correct ourselves. You know what I mean? So... Bottom line, I, I'm I'm really just here for my education and everybody else's education as well. Yeah, I just love to share. I love to learn. I love, you know, teach what I can, and 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 that's that, my brother. That's what it is. I appreciate you doing what you're doing, and a lot of people don't know like how we met. I met you on Facebook. You know what I mean? And yeah. I tell people the root how I meet people. You know what I'm saying? I'm an Ishmael on Facebook originally. You know what I mean? Um, but when me and you met last. It was last year when we got kind of close on Facebook, talking back and forth, and we'll cover what's going on and everything. And I asked you to come on the podcast originally, you know what I'm saying? But I first said, right. right. I'm going to do it. So I bring you back because obviously this is what me and you just talk about on Facebook from then to now, you know what I mean? And I know you share these right. type of content, same as Mac Blaine down there. Mac Blaine, um, he does the same. So, But first, because I'm going to go down the line. Ishmael, you're the next on my screen, so um, pull them up real quick. Um, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your background real quick before I go to Mac Lane? Before yeah, we go to our discussion. Yeah, no problem. Ishmael Bay, um, co-founder of a research group, I'm a Raw Squad, also a founder of our First Tribe Aboriginal, which is an organization that deals with our indigenous roots here in this land of America. Um, you can always catch Brother Ish on either Facebook or you catch me on Clubhouse given sessions, I deal with social issues, uh, modern day, as well as historical issues that deal with Africa, as well as the American history. So that's what I do. Appreciate you for tapping in for the discussion tonight, by the way. Say, say the um, website one more time. Indeed, it's uh, First Tribe Aboriginal. The website's name is firsttribenation.com. Appreciate that. Thank you for tapping in. Hey, hey, you've been on Sarnetta TV before, haven't you? That guy right there, Ishmael Bay, I heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. me and Sonetta go way back. I've been on a call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I was just on there yeah. like last week. Yes, sir. Okay. That's what's up, bro. Yes, sir. American, the American on Facebook. You can follow this brand right here on Facebook. The man pushes a lot of content out. Matt Blaine, tell everybody a little about yourself before we go into the discussion, brother. Appreciate you for tapping in. All right. Well, uh, basically, I created the American platform, and it's unapologetically American, and it's basically to educate people, our people, specifically on who we are and tear down the lies of the out of Africa theory, which keeps so many of us confused and, you know, not understanding who we really are. And just from my experience and educating myself and learning who he was and the way it made me feel, the pride that it gave me, you know, I just want to share that with everyone. So, you know, take it or leave it. That's how you. That's how it is. That's why I appreciate you, Matt Blaine, for tapping in like you do. Thank you again. Thank all three of you for tapping in for this panel discussion. You know what I'm saying? Only one person could have made it because he had a death recently. Shout out to Imhotep. Shout out to Imhotep for, you know, his, his lost one of his friends. So I didn't even, you know, after I seen that, I would have left that alone. But, you know, these three, it was four of you guys because all of you guys come from different perspectives. Even though I think it's all still similar to each other based off of all the things I've talked to you guys on, on my own personal levels. So the definition, I sent this to each one of you. I hope you guys had a chance to at least look at the words of native alienation versus ethnogenesis before we had our discussion tonight. Everybody's fair on that part? But for fair reasons... For the people that's listening and tapping in it, I'm going to give it out real quick. And then I'm going to give each one of you a chance to tell me what you guys think. And we're going, like I said, there's three main things we're talking about tonight. But the first one is native alienation versus ethnogenesis. So this term, native alienation, is the estrangement or disconnection from historical memory, which occurs by severing an individual 
from their kinship traditions, cultural heritage, including language and religion, and economic inheritance through experiences and social death. It creates the conditions in which an individual now estranged from knowledge of their social heritage can become a commodity defined by their relationships to systems and structures that often caused and benefit from their very alienation. The term was coined by sociologist Orlando Patterson in reference to the conditions of African slaves through transatlantic slave trade. The natural alienated individuals embodied the colonized individual who was been who has been, excuse me, forced to reject or forget their own histories, being born in society which prevents them from participating it in or knowing their traditions and conditions them to forget them. It has been described as an inheritance and disinheritance and essential to what's that word at the end? Homelessness. Homelessness. Thank you. Because I was looking at I thought that was L or I. I know I read it before. Homelessness. So just off the first definition, I'm gonna go down the line. Uh Mac Blaine, you're at the top right now. What do you think about this definition and how it relates to our people? Um basically what I get out of that is what I call the cultural genocide. And um, it's basically when you strip people of knowledge of themselves and their culture, and it gets a lot deeper than that because it's like a socialistic twist to it, to where you demonize their culture and say like if they created tobacco, you make them think that it gives them cancer. Or if they eat pig, you make them all hate pig and that pig give them high blood pressure, you know? So basically you can look at this with soul food and all of the ingredients in soul, food, like the sweet potatoes, the corn, these things, whole civilizations was created with. And they have all types of nutrients in them, but because you put too much sugar or you put too much salt, the whole meal is ruined and it's bad food. You know, really it's the best food you can possibly eat, you know, honestly. But uh, I digress on that point. But basically, that's what it is. You know, it's a form of socialism, actually. It's like right out of uh, Karl Marx's book. Hmm. Good point. I'm going to come back. We're going first. Rob, you next on my own screen. What you think about that? Man, you know, uh, it's a lot. It was a lot of terms in it that, that to me you know i had a couple questions when i heard it you know like um mm -hmm. what ye what year did that guy you said coin that phrase I, i'm wondering because you know when they started talking about middle passage I'm, I'm i'm curious when the discussion of middle passage actually started you know what i'm saying but um as far as that definition that was the the nato alienation right yeah i mean you know Bro, all of all of all of the ways that we have been just disassociated from who we really are, you know. I mean, it's so many. It's so many different ways, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, man, that's what's that's what's important about what we're doing right now. I, I think even as individuals, and you know, I'm glad that we can all meet up like this. Is is to be above. These kind of titles and these this 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 whole mentality, like you know, being put in a category, being put in a box by somebody else, defining you. You know what? I'm, no, you know what I mean. Like it's time to bust all of that open, man. We don't we don't have to accept it. You know, we I feel like we if we could ever actually get together, we could come up with a a, a good name for ourselves then. But there are terms that apply to us right now. That I think is more appropriate than what we're using or what's been put on us. And I'm sure we're gonna get a little deeper into that, you know, especially on that next that next word that you want to use. But um I'll leave it at that for now. You know, we can open up the discussion. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um and ish. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to just add to I had thought of something else to make my point a little more clear. But um, like, you know how we have the canceling of ancient mama and uh, Miss Uncle Ben's rice and uh, all of these different black characters or whatever, they're canceling them. And I always say it's not 
They act as if they're liberating us with it. We're going to get rid of the racism by getting ancient mama off the syrup. But really, it's getting rid of your culture. And now my child know that ancient mama made syrup and that her people created that. So, you know, it's, it's not really liberation. It's disguised as liberation, but really it's cultural assassination. Please. Great, that. Yeah. Well, uh, Ish, real quick, what you got to say? Well, not real quick. Take your time. Give me what you think about this, this definition, what you think about it. Yeah, no problem. Um, NATO alienation. Um, you know, NATO has the same etymological root as native. So in other words, it's a it's someone who's robbing you. You know, it took me back to uh, the days with Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, and you could hear him on the public enemy one, you know, talking about when we were brought here, we were robbed of our names, robbed of our religion, our culture, our God. And many of us, by the way we act, we even lost our mind. So you know, going through that and being trained by Dr. Khaled, he always pounded that into us as his, you know, as his as his students. But that's what NATO alienation is. That's someone who's robbing you of your identity, of your core, of your being, of your folkways, of your mores, and then creating and making you into some other caricature for to be used as a tool and a slave. So NATO alienation is that process of that stripping of a person's identity. And as brother, the American was just talking about um, on my page, on my website today, I just posted up a uh, topic that said Aboriginal food is soul food of today. Aboriginal food. You know what I mean? This is us that created the, the, the maple syrup and the hot cakes and the, and, and the cranberries and the potatoes and the tomatoes. These are indigenous foods. But yet they'll lift it up and say that some Italian created the, 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 you know, the, the tomatoes when tomatoes are indigenous to here. And we've mastered all of these foods. We are the people who make the sweet potato pies. You know, that's original to here. The squash is original to here, this land, you know? So we've been stripped of an identity, but we've always been functioning in our culture, but we just weren't, we weren't, we didn't even know that that culture was always here. So that's what NATO alienation is to me. I yield the floor. Thank you. I appreciate you for tapping in on that. You know, we, you know I'm sliding through the next to bring it back to the top. Real quick, you know, we're starting in a real quick place. Let's get the ethnogenesis because I'm trying to move along into this conversation. Um, ethnogenesis, please, when you get a chance. So, ethnogenesis is my next part. This is a versus. You know what I mean? This is a versus between, I find them that they go against each other. You know, when you look at what alienation means, it's like somebody, like, like uh, Rob said, and how even Mac Blame said, hey, he, all three of you said the same thing I'm thinking too, in a combination of your own perspectives. It's like holding you back from being who you are and who your culture is, and somebody's trying to label you or disenfranchise you to something that you know naturally that's not what your people, you know, culture was heritage is. You know what I'm saying? And the alienation is to keep you from it on paper by this term being used and how it's being used, such as the term African American. You know what I'm saying? And how that was coined and put on our people, which we kind of dislabeled all the different nations and empires and heritages that are mixed between this term that they try to put us under by this term by just saying African and then American, which I'm older than the term African American, by the way, ethnogenesis. So that means I know all y'all probably older than the term African American too, as far as it being coined when Jesse Jackson, you know what I mean, and you know the NWACP. Did they think? You know what I mean? So that's what we're gonna get into that in a minute. But um ethnogenesis. Oh Sorry. you gotta do that. No, they gotta get their advertisement on. They're using the they census or just kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um so this is the process by which a group of people becomes ethnically distinct. The formation and development of a ethnic group. Very simple. So I'm gonna come. I'm gonna go right back down the line again. Matt Blaine, what you think about ethnogenesis? I mean, it's different ways you can look at it, but you know, if I just speak in reference to our people, you know, we we are ethnically uh, different from everywhere anybody else in the world. But now that I've researched, I see we do share 
culture, which is what culture really is. See, you know, they confuse us a lot to where we don't understand what culture is. They think we supposed to have some type of African culture when we completely different. And just my belief is people only really understand their own culture. So we're not supposed to understand say Europeans culture. We think that's, you know, some of the things they do is pretty gutter and savage like, and right. they feel the same way about us. They don't understand why we whip somebody ass if they step on our shoe in the club. It's not because we stupid. It's because you should have watched what you was fucking doing. You don't have no respect, you know? <laughs> but that's our culture and only us can understand it, you know? So uh, it's unique to us. I have a video that's on my page and it's uh, some Australian Aboriginals. They're in uh, Queensland, Australia, and they got liquor stores and, you know, all the same old stuff and they fighting. And man, they throwing hands like you would see in the projects and nobody's jumping, nobody. They shaking hands. People get under the video, say, oh, they plan. They're not playing. But if you don't understand what's going on, then you just not us. And that's just what it is, right. you know? So I don't even explain it to nobody. The people that look at it and say, I see what you're trying to say, brother. Bam, you know, that's it. That's all I'm doing is relaying the message anyway, you know? So, yeah, that's I'm real, though. Right I, I, I brought you on here for your perspective. I don't want you to drill, but to keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to give me nothing else. I want your perspective. Real talk. That's what this panel discussion is about when it comes to these topics. So I, I, don't, I don't want nobody. You know, I be keeping it 100. It's a time. It's everybody governing themselves accordingly. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, so, right. We'll be real with that. Rob, what you, what you think about that? Um, what you think about ethnogenesis? At ethnogenesis. I, I do like the way Mac Blaine just put it down. That was that was a good, and I actually seen that video too. That's, that was dope. Um, you know, when they talk about the formation and development of an ethnic group, and I just think to myself, as I'm learning more and more how old our people really are, it's really, the term applies more to the younger ethnics. And I mean, I, I don't have to really, I, you know, like the Anglo-Saxons and those they can folks, they came and put names on everybody and everything, they names, you know. I'm pretty sure our people didn't really need names, those type of names. We just mm -hmm. are, who, we are who we are. You know what I'm saying? And that's a big part of the problem because you know how, for instance, when you talk about like uh, we talk about like the Olmecs and the Mayans. Well, both for one thing, the same people. You gave them two different names, and neither one of the names are their names, right? So, descriptive. I mean, for us, for us, it's like uh, you know, it's like really, y y y whether we're indigenous Aboriginal Americans, or even if you brought some Aboriginal Africans or Aboriginal Australians or Pacific Island, because they did all of that. They did mix right. us up. But the majority of us, the majority of us here are, are us, the original people here. You know what I mean? And so as far as the names, man, even like when you talk about Indian tribes, it's like, you know, a lot of these tribes, the, the names they're using now, that's not really the names they gave themselves. Once again, that's somebody coming from the outside and coming in and deciding, you know, what they mispronunciation of things, this is the name, and these are those people. Man, at the end of the day, I feel like we are the, the people who, the only people who really need to worry about correcting our, our status, our, our not, you know, our, our titles. Identify, because right. they, yeah, they, they, they done took it and shredded it. You know, everybody else knows who they are and they are and they know they're in their environment. And we're the only ones who they made us feel like we're not in our environment and y'all not who you think you are and y'all ain't got no history. And, and man, and the reality is our history is older than everybody's damn history. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just keeping the gangster. So, yeah, man, we got, oh. some, we got some learning to do. We got some learning to do. You know what I mean? But I, I feel like, yo, we're in a good space right now, man. We just need to work together. We need to keep learning. And, we, you know, not fight over not fight over terms, fellas. Don't fight over terms. Hey, hey, we don't need that. Right. We don't right. need I, that. I, I would Shout like to add a that. little bit to that. All, all right. Day. All That's right. Real. And uh, just something that I noticed with my studies, indigenous people usually name themselves after the area that they live in. You know, like Mississippi is right. an Indian word. Alabama is the Indian word. So when I refer to yes. our people, 
so that I don't step on any Native American toes or they want to call the FBI on you because people out here doing that. You know, I just refer to our people by the area that they in. And the reason why I do that is because that's what they do. So uh, when they took the American Colonization Society, the only time the slave masters got together with the the uh, abolitionists, they, they, they hooked up on this one to transport black Americans to Africa and they created the country of Liberia over there. And what's funny is the maps of Liberia. We, we just went over there with our same old bullshit and we have Mississippi, Liberia, you got Alabama, Georgia. We just went over that name. So we know where the people came from that they brought over there because they named the area that they moved in after where they left. So, you know, Mm. It's just consistent across the board. We always pretty much do, do that, you know. Appreciate that. Put that in there. Ishmael, man, what you think about this? It's your, it's your turn. Pull them up real quick for me. What, 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 what you think about this turn? What's your thoughts on it, brother? Yeah, I say regarding ethnogenesis, it's really just, again, ethnically starting over or recreating something after you recognize that you are ethnically different and distinct from someone else. We are a unique people here in the Americas. So in other words, it's not a coincidence that Michael Jordan is as dominant as he is, or LeBron James, or Simone Biles, her dominance in gymnastics. We are a distinct ethnic group of people. And we've gone through a distinct journey in order to be who we are. So in other words, there's something that we have that nobody else can relate to. And that's fine. We're in that unique space and we've earned that. Our bars are our scars and we have earned this right in order to say we are in this unique position. So the things that they put us through as far as that process of slavery, that's what has made us so strong. That's what has made us so unique. So again, when we see the dominance that we do portray, that's us being a distinct people, not saying that we're better than anyone else, well, we are better than everybody else. But I'm just saying, not, 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 not to put anybody else down. Hey, you know, hey, we, hey, we, hey, one hey, love, one hey, love. Hey, one love. He ain't got a game. He good, money is. So we gonna have to snap on yeah. each other about yeah. that. Yeah. You know? How can you call me that? Unapologetic, brother. So not to put anybody else down, but we're in that space that we are just that great, you know, we're that great of a people. And we're actually coming into that identity of understanding how great we are. And that's the beauty of it. We're starting to see people starting to say, yo, that's us. Like we created hip hop. Like, yo, that's <laughs> us. Like what we say is hot is hot. That's us. And that's ethnogenesis in motion. And I love it, bro. So that's my. That's a good yeah. analogy, man. Hold on. I, yeah. I said yeah. that to you, yeah. Tisha, one time. <laughs> no, for real, though, it's, no, hip hop is a great analogy to who we are exactly in the culture right now. You know what I mean? And we created that culture in the time most of us growing up. We've seen it, we take part in it. And I remember people used to say, that's little kid shit. That's why when he, it struck a nerve with me, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, you know, again, only reason, only reason that turn struck a nerve with me was because of the fact that I know plenty of people that have, you know, lifestyle is of what we, he just uses an analogy, hip hop, which we created. And then we have people's skill set of trying to make it in this culture and make, and make a life out of it and take care of their families off of it. And some people do very, very well off of it. You know what I'm saying? Some people can't and they have to do something else to, you know what I mean? To live, which has nothing to do with their lifestyle and the ethnogenesis of what they take part in culture. You know what I'm saying? And who they are. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to ever make, make it seem like I'm downplaying anybody for their failures in economically trying to, you know what I mean? Turn it into a business. But overall, what you just said, ethnogenesis, is where I tie into why I like this word so much versus alienation. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get where I'm going with this? Because Hip hop is ethnogenesis. Jazz, ethnogenesis. Rock and roll, right. ethnogenesis. You know what I mean? When we think about just the music and how it got created and what was created out of, what was inspired out of to make it. You know what I'm saying? What inspired hip hop? What inspired these cultures of music that we listen to right now? That's an analogy. You know what I'm saying? So 
now you look at a people and you if you if you apply the same thought process to people, you know what I'm saying? And how things develop over timelines through wars, moving, migration, mixing, you know what I mean? Languages mixing, beliefs mixing, on spiritual levels mixing, to everything. You get an ethnogenesis term that comes about of the people self-describing themselves in the time that they're in and how they're to govern themselves at that time in the territory they're in through that ethnogenesis mix of cultures and people. You know what I mean? I think that's really important because, you know, back in like the 80s, I think it was like 87, I made my first trip and I went to, to Australia. And when you walk the streets of Sydney, Australia, you see the Aborigines that are there and they pull you to the side and they want to know, like, can I buy your shirt or can I, you know, <laughs> what, what kind of shoes are those that you have on? They and love us. They, they love, love us, right? We so don't even so, know they exist. <laughs> there you go. And they literally treat you like a celebrity. If you go into their equivalent to Burger King is what something called Hungry Jacks. When you go into some Hungry Jacks, they'll ask you for your autograph and, and things like that. They want to know what makes you who you are. In other words, they're recognizing that you are ethnically different and you're ethnically unique. And there's, there's a lot of power in that. And there's a lot of self-affirmation in that because the United Nations gives you the ability to self-define. So that's when you're saying, whoa, I am, you know what I mean? Like, and you start to feel a certain kind of way and realize your influence. So we had that power. Are you agreeing with that? Self-identify? Well, yeah, right. yeah I, I mean, I, I agree with them, you know, and that is what they do. See, the Australian Aboriginals are not taught to us because they actually share culture with us. And you wouldn't know why we do some of the things we do until you start studying other people and you say, damn, hold up. They're doing the same thing we're doing. We're not doing what we're doing by choice, you know, by chance. It's not because of slavery we cook for eight hours. This is Aboriginal way all over, wherever you find us at. And I like to add, we're not even found all over the world. You know, it, as far as I can see, it's we're like, pertaining to the Oceania region and uh -huh. Americas and the Americas. And, you know, a lot of old maps show those lands are connected. So you can basically like walk from North America to South America and it connects to Antarctica and it whips all the way around across the Pacific. But you have islands that sit off the coastline of all that land. And those islands are the Fuji Islands, the islands of Tango, Solomon Islands, and they're full of Negro <laughs> populations that look like more closer than to black Americans than Africans do. And they share our culture. They move like us, they fight like us, you know, they box like us. That's like something, you know, you're not taught that. We just kind of throw them hands like that, you know. That's why, yeah, boxing, yeah. that's why boxing came out of America, you know, and we have different types of boxing in different parts of America, but boxing is the aboriginal way of selling the scope. So, yeah. I, <laughs> I like I how you put that. that. Good point. Now, I like how you put that. It's a good point. These are cultural things that people don't pay attention to that. Where did they develop from? Where, where did the skill of fighting come from? Like the kangaroo, right? Where did kangaroo come from? Well, a they, kangaroo like, is a marsupial, and they only found in Australia. But I, I said that for a reason. I said okay. that for a reason, Matt Blaine. You know we both Max. Right, right. So, yeah. That was an yeah. alley-oop, by the way. That right. was an alley -oop. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, marsupial is only found in America and in Australia. They don't have them in Africa. And, and <laughs> that's, a, that's something else a lot of people don't pay attention to. You know, they always say they bring Africans over here. If an African came to America and saw a jaguar, he wouldn't know what the fuck that was. I mean, he just wouldn't know what it is. You just can't uh -oh. take somewhere, somebody to something strange. Just like when you go to Africa... And you might see a gazelle or something. You don't know what the hell that is, but if I see a deer, I can walk right past it. You know, they have different animals. It's not one big circle of life. It's a, lot, it's a whole lot of little bitty ones. And we have our own unique ecosystem, and these animals share this ecosystem with us, and we eat them, we live with them, and everything. We don't know nothing about lions or um, tigers. That's just not our animals. Our apex predator is the jaguar the alligator the pig the the the, the hare which is a bunny uh catfish shrimps all the things that they say is like the worst shit you can eat basically ain't that something <laughs> yeah that's that's just uh, and, and we can't ignore the fact that it was us 
you know, we can look up and see the, the Pequot tribes today of Connecticut. They're our people. These are the people that gave the turkey to the pilgrims when they got there in the 1630s, in the 1620s. You know what I mean? Like those Pequots are our people. You make the dressing out of corn, you know, it's just cornbread. So corn and uh, it don't matter what level you on, even in the hood, we're still, you still, you still have the same culture. You go to the corner store, you get some Doritos, that's corn chips. You get some, uh, some Lay's, you're eating potato. This shit is indigenous to America and they know they eat an Indian what Indians eat. You see what I mean? And then when you go down to the snack food, like you can't go home without bringing your lady some snacks because we invented the vanilla and the and the cocoa and the um basically mm. the peanuts and, and everything that you use to make debit snacks and and Snickers, all that shit is indigenous to America. So, so another one, that Reese's, that Reese's, that Reese's is us, the chocolate and the peanut chocolate. butter. Yeah, chocolate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you exactly. know, it's, it's, it's just like with the Italians. They created the pasta, but we created the tomato, so they didn't have shit to put on their pasta. You know what I mean? Hey, hold on, America, uh, Matt. Mm. Shout out to Sherry from um, Clubhouse. She said that earlier. I ain't going to lie. It's like you saying it now. Got to give uh-huh. her a shout out. her. She say that. Tomatoes. Uh-huh. Come from the Americas, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, y'all yeah. made the pasta, but the sauce came from us. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and yeah, when the Irish, when the Irish had their potato famine, the potatoes started here in the Americas. So we oh, fed I, the Irish when they could eat themselves. Oh man, right. the potato, the potato only was found in America, and uh, the Australian Aborigines had their form of the potato. By the way, they call it a yam. But uh, <laughs> yam. you know, I, I I see a lot of like the same slang, like in Australia. Like I can watch a documentary, and they might say it's a freshwater crocodile, but we don't call it a crocodile. I mean, it's an alligator, but we don't call it an alligator. It's a freshwater crocodile. My 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 ancestors tell me, you know, my my uncles and stuff i used to go fishing with they would say the same damn thing they would say you know that's it's, it's a, a, a alligator is a freshwater crocodile that's what they would tell us but then they'll say we don't have no alligators but they always say that you know but you because you got the same animals you go all the way across the world to the pacific islands and they have the same ecosystems as we do here in america we live in a tropical you know, environment and and in Africa it's like a jungle and a rainforest. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a big difference. We have an abundance of food. Food grow all over a rainforest, but a jungle is more like a dry forest. So it's different environments all together. Some people, you know, can't even handle the terrain. You know, like most white people drink water here and be sick as hell. They can't drink this water in this country. You know, or in Mexico, they go to Mexico drink that shit. They be sick. They drink bottled water all the fucking time. You can drink it. Believe it. You can drink it. I appreciate that one right there. So we're going to, you know, I'm going to move along into this conversation and see how we can do it. You know, again, in time, you know, this right here, my next thing is the term African-American. I want to know each one of your thoughts about this term and your perspectives on this term. Ishmael, you're at the top. You go first. Yes. Um, so African American, um, you know, it's it's a self defining term, first used in the 1700s, um, being recognized as a self defining term. Um, it's something that's used and more popularized by Reverend Jesse Jackson in the 80s. Um, it's not something that's going to ethnically truly describe who we are, because it's it's just so vague, and they use these vague and ambiguous terms and try to apply them to us as an ethnicity, but those are only little temporary little little titles. So in other words, it's not something that's gonna accurately describe who and what we are. To be called a continent continent is not ethnically identifying who we are as a people because someone else can come from South Africa, be of European descent, come over here and still qualify for the term African-American. That alone makes it null and void as far as a universal ethnically descriptive term. So that's my definition of African American. It's a temporary non-descriptive title. Yeah. All right, somebody, you could go next, Rob. Well, I, I agree with what he said. Like you said, you know, it, it was used like very briefly in the 1700s, you see that in like, a, in, in like one or two writings. You know, um, 
maybe in the in the 60s and a little before that they may have used the term afro american but not african american and even when Jesse Jackson, you know, I, lot, I know a lot of people just, you know, when they think about Jesse Jackson, they get upset for a lot of reasons. But, you know, I'll just say, giving him the benefit of the doubt, when he did that, thought that was a good thing for us to have something to identify with. But in reality, like now in 2020 and 2021, we realized that was disassociating us from our land and our home. So actually, it is that alienation that you was talking about earlier. You know what I'm saying? Because in reality, it's like you're home, but they're telling you you're African American, so then, then you're not really home. And then so when you got the the, the racists and the bigots telling you go back to Africa, well, 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 most of us ain't from Africa. You know what I'm saying? And 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 a lot of people who don't study the kind of stuff we study. They don't have that to fight back with. They don't have that retort to them. They just, they feel bad. They feel like, man, he's right. And just so you got groups of people who want to go to Ghana and go to other parts of Africa and feel like, you know, I'll be, I'll be home there. And in reality, like Mac was saying, Mac, uh, Mac blame or no. Yeah. The American was saying earlier, you know, that's not our home. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And the culture is different. You know, when you get there, yeah, okay, you're around other melanated people and it might be okay, but they're not, we're not the same people. Our culture is different. We don't eat the same. We don't think the same. We don't, we don't, we don't, we're not triggered by the same things. You know what I'm saying? It, we're different. And I mean, it's nothing wrong with, you know, that, but we need to know that. Yeah, it's fine that we're different. It's just that we need to know who we are and understand why we are, how we are, you know what I mean? And, and really the term African-American, like, you know, from the beginning, I was just saying, it just disassociates us from who we really are. And that's not, that's not okay. You know what I mean? I, I won't even go, yo, they was doing something. They was intentionally trying to, you know, enslave. I ain't going to say all of that. I'll just say, you know, maybe his intentions was good. Maybe, maybe not, right. but it didn't help us. You know what I'm saying? It didn't help us. You know what I'm saying? And now we have an opportunity to correct that, and we should absolutely correct it. We should not allow it to continue, especially since they talk about this critical race theory. My thing is this. We need to tell all the truth. If you're not going to tell the whole truth, don't tell nothing. Shut up all together. Real talk. You know, they're scared to discuss the, the critical race theory because of whatever reason they scared for, but what they really need to be scared of is us like us, this group of folks right here that are learning who we really are and what everything that, what they actually owe us. And it ain't no reparations. It's beyond that. You understand? It's not, that's not enough. Yeah. That's not yeah, enough. Thank you for saying that. I agree, brother. I agree with you. I agree. Okay. And I'll leave it alone, my brothers. And I appreciate y'all. No, I really talk. Right. I, I think that the African American term is cultural cancel culture you know it's disguised as liberation we're gonna give y'all an identity and then stump out your true identity you know that's just like what they're doing mm -hmm. with ancient mama it's the same old playbook you know just a different day and um but the rest of the terms i don't run from like negro you know you listen to martin luther king you know whether however you feel about him you know he at least he, he did what he could do. And, but he always referred to as Negro, you know, or color or something like that. But a lot of these terms we never was on record as, you know, we're not really on record as African-Americans. A lot of us is marked down as Negro and color, color. but right. that's mm -hmm. pretty much all we really been classified. You know, it's just um, political correctness to call us African-American right now, which is, disrespectful you're not calling nobody else no shit like that and you're not really helping them, you know? <laughs> it, it's just to right. detach us but i don't run from it either because you know it's 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 easy to draw that paper trail you know i don't need no dna i don't need nothing african americans were negroes was the negroes and the negroes were the indians and the indians are the natives to this mm. land and the natives to this land are the first nation so i embrace them all i don't hate them none i don't hate none of them Basically. Now, real talk, though. In America. Right. Now, real talk, though. I, I don't agree with that term at all either. Now that you know the how it went about the social, the social construct of it, 
You know what I mean? Most of them, like I said, are older than the term when it right, really socially right. was yeah. being actually applied to us. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. We, we actually witness this. You know what I'm saying? We witness, <laughs> you know what I mean? This term being applied Man. to us. It wasn't like a term we were born with. Man, this, I, is, I, this is, a, you know what I mean, a social construct term that been applied to us. You know what I mean? I have witnessed so much stuff in the last year to where it makes you question if anything is true. And you know, just just to just to bring up a point, like we have the whole George Floyd situation, right? I don't know how many of you guys went out there and protested, but I didn't because I didn't feel like I didn't have no energy for that. I mean, I just yeah. wasn't feeling that. It was way too much going on than to be worrying about some some George Floyd. And uh I don't believe that was really black Americans out there protesting. It was a lot of people from South America that came over the border and they were just out there holding signs and doing what the people say they needed to come over here and do. And then when you see something like this take place and the propaganda, and then they make it whatever they want it to be. They, they, they just put it on the news and they made all black Americans crying over George Floyd and we wasn't. But, you know, this is the same thing could have happened with, say, for instance, uh, Rodney King. You know, we don't know for sure if if we really was mad, if people in L.A. was really outraged or if it was it was staged sort of like this crap we done seen over 2020, you know. So just a little thought just to throw out there for everybody, you know. No, real talk, man. I think you, again, this is just a bill. So I'm gonna, uh, on this bill live, my next thing to ask, because to me, it's, and shout out to um, Top Cast. Big, you know, Big Chief doing his thing on YouTube. I interviewed him a couple of weeks back. You know, I built with the brother. You know what I mean? The brother's doing some big things on describing and detailing some of the historical things that we're not being told. So I want you to tap into him because he's doing a great job on that. And I salute the man for what he does and his patience. You know what I'm saying? And, I, you know, I think he, by the way, shout out to BCU and the book he just dropped as well. And I interviewed him, like I said. So I'm going to shout out all the people that's giving out content on the level we're talking about tonight, it's gonna to help our people come into an enlightenment of these things. You know what I mean? I agree. It's, it's never gonna be no divide on that. But when we get into this term, Aboriginal American, when you put the term Aboriginal, because again, and I, really, I shout out the um, Top Cast again because he's the one that gave me the thought process of saying. It's the death of the African American because of the terms that he be using on his different, you know, I mean, lectures and stuff that he be dropping, and it, and and it came to that concept. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you've been on Clubhouse and the different debates and stuff and things that take place. Ishmael, you know what I mean? You can relate what I'm saying by that. That's why I use that word. But the making, because I feel like alienation is compared to the death of African American, which we were given, which we knew was taking us off the land. To us now knowing who we are and applying ourselves to a term ethnogenesis, right? To what we know that we all can self-identify with that socially, politically, culturally, you know what I mean, can allow us to move in a union. And that Aboriginal American term has been thrown out a lot. It's been used on a lot of Instagram posts. There's a lot of people that's using this term. It's a term that's being used. So that's why I want to. I, I'm not going to just say Aboriginal by itself because. As Mac Blame just said, you know, we got Australians. That's who's really been applied to when people that don't have the knowledge of what we know, you know what I mean? Think of Aboriginals, think Australia. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Y'all get where I'm going with that? But okay. us knowing what the term, well, I ain't saying you is personally or anybody on this panel, but the average person, when they think Aboriginal, they're thinking about Australia. Yeah, actually, it's Aborigine. Mm -hmm. You're right, Aborigine. Right. You're right. They're thinking that. Okay, the Aboriginal American is yeah of that lane is plural. Right. So this term Aboriginal we're all using now and it's in the media and different things now, and the American being the noun and Aboriginal being in front of the American which be the adjective. What is your thoughts on that before we you know well, close out our discussion? I, now, I really want to cover all three. What's your thoughts, Matt Glenn? I use, I use the term Aboriginal American 
because if you know anything about the Australian Aboriginals, they basically, you know, everybody gets the same story. You know, the so-called white man comes, he, he drop off some criminals, they come and they colonize the land. But calling them Aboriginals, now, right before they got to Australia is when they colonized the Americas. So they colonized the Americas and then they went, mm -hmm. kept on, and they ended up colonizing mm -hmm. Australia. So they was calling us Aboriginals too, mm -hmm. because they knew that we was connected to those Australian Aboriginals, because they was in the Aboriginal part of the world, you know what I mean? And um, those when I start to look back at history and you think of stuff like the uh, abolitionist and how they was to free slaves, but you see that elbow on the front of that shit, you know, they were trying to free aboriginals, if you see what mm -hmm. I'm saying here. They wasn't trying to free African slaves. Not with what the way that they named themselves, you know? So um, the term actually means, you know, in sprung from the land as if you came from this land you were created here you know people would like to believe that life the conditions was perfect in africa and life was created well i believe those conditions was perfect in other places in the world and people are actually from the places where they are not be migrating or moving to nowhere where else i don't think we are australian aboriginals i believe we are the american aboriginals I agree. So yeah, I I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. But I'm all right. I appreciate that, term. brother. No, I appreciate that tap in. That's why I brought you on the panel because I see what you share. You the American, so I knew from your content that you share, and I wanted you to also promote the you know what you do, so people could tap into you, what you do. You know what I mean? Acknowledge what you do and keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I appreciate you for coming on tonight and sharing what you know from your own studies and background, what you share to the other people to enlighten them. Right. You know I mean, and, thank you again. And it's Go and ahead, it's sir. also a difference. So, an uh, Aboriginal is an Indigenous person, but all Indigenous people are not Aboriginals, and you know that's something that a lot of people don't understand. When I use the term Aboriginal, I'm only pertaining to America and Australia and the Pacific Islands in Oceania is part of Australia to me, you know, and I'm only pertaining to that certain area. That's the only people that I see share culture. That's the people who have the animals, the plants, and you can assume they share people as well since they have the same ecosystems. So that's all I can say, you know, can speak for when I speak of Aboriginals. You know, they didn't invent the potato in Africa and they didn't invent corn in Africa, you know, and I can't speak on that. And, you know, a lot of people like to say, well, yeah, we was all over the world, but I just, we're not, I'm not talking about all over the world. I'm talking about this specific people here that share this culture. So, that's real. Yeah, just appreciate point that. that out. Yeah, and, and I, I support the Aboriginal Australians as a branch of our family, as our cousins, you know, they're part of it. But again, like I said, I've, I've, I've walked on their continent and I've seen their reaction to us. We just cool it. We just got to bet, you know, like the culture <laughs> of what we represent, it's, it's, it's in that unique space of we have, we can prove that the oldest DNA that's found was found in South Carolina, not Australia. Right here. So we're in that unique space of us being who we are. And the women are beautiful. Our cultures are beautiful. Our expression of music. I'm not having nothing against what they do with the little woom, 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 and, and their, their unique expression. <laughs> but no our, different our, than what we do with the two. I'm sorry. What's up? Hey, stop this. <laughs> no, but, but our inventions. <laughs> yeah, you know that little tube thing they do, the little woom, woom, woom. Listen, cool. listen, listen. Those Australians don't have our culture. You know, right. they have a slightly different culture from us. So they are, they don't mind showing them. And exactly. not all of them, because, you know, they've been through a lot, like with the uh, stolen generation, where they took a lot of Aboriginal children and put with white families. So they have a lot right. of people we would call $5 Indians. So when you study their history, you got to dodge the $5 Indian hijack. And they got that same shit going on over there. You know, so okay. they're going to show you the, the, the colonized tribes, not really the the real indigenous people that's in the hood. And to find them, you got to go on Facebook and then you find them and you talk with them and you, hey man, where your mama stay at? And you see how they talk and you learn, you realize you have way more in common with these people than what you think. 
you know, but you have to find yeah. the right ones. Just like they can't come over here looking for no India, they're going to get, you already know, you know what I mean? Our influence from <laughs> Australia was with, you know, their revolutionary, his last name was Walker. He was a Black Panther over there. You know what I mean? What, but he... What? Yeah, um, they had a version yeah. of Black Panthers over there. They had that a was, version of the Black Panthers. 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 They all had, they all, all yeah, the islands, did. like uh, a lot of the islands there had uh, Martin Luther King-like figures too. Like, uh, I'm sorry, y'all, hold on. It's all good, man. We, well, I'm, hey, man, it's, it's cool. <laughs> no problem. Me first. No problem. I got these kids, man. <laughs> hey, man, that's all good. You got it in. We got it. just bust in my office, man. They all on me. Come on, guys. Come on with your mama. Get, yeah. Ooh. Thank you. That's why you got to shout out to Matriarch. Shout out to yeah. Matriarch, right? Okay. Go ahead, brother. Oh, uh, man. It almost made me lose my train of thought. Thank you, Cherish, for coming with me. But um, I was just saying, all right, like with the Australian Aboriginals. Now, the ones that I see share culture with us is from the Tasmanians on down through New Zealand and those islanders. Those are actually the oldest aboriginals. And that's the ones that they say that Lucia, the body that was found in Brazil with hundreds of other bodies, you know, um, matched the people, that phenotype. So that would be that older aboriginal, the one that share our culture. Now the, the other ones, they play the little diggity do and they do all that. It's just like Native Americans over here play the flute. Do we play flutes? Hell no. And when they examined like the Tasmanians, they had this native Tasmanian before she died. They had us sing one of their songs. Their songs sound like our blues songs and they show a high level of musical capability because they sang with so many different octaves and uh, different rhythms and melodies. The same melodies that you find in hip hop and uh, our blues music and the same stuff we create. So we show that same high level of uh, musical capability. That's the culture. You know, Africans don't really have that. They beat kind of the same rhythm over and over when they be beating on their little drum. Boom, 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 boom. We don't, we don't do that. We can switch up every damn bar up? and right. it all still sound good in the end. It's just our mu musical capability. They love to see those islanders sing. They go to those islands and they teach them kids and make those choirs with the Aboriginal kids. They love it. And that's the same thing they do with our kids. Put them in the choirs and put them in these performance art schools and have them sing and they just love our musical capability. So the one to point that out is different from anywhere else in the world. Real talk. Did I, did I, did I, um, we tap into Rob yet on this conversation? Um, real quick, Rob, what's the no, I was, I was letting you, know, I was going to oh, well, um, I basically, bro, when when you say Aboriginal American, I like I like Indigenous Aboriginal Americans, just to be specific. And when you say even Aboriginal American, you're saying what we are, not necessarily who we are. That's what we are. You know, every individual tribe and group, subgroups and so on, they have their own names. And I right, mean, right. is right. Like right. You yeah. know. Mac is right. They are. We have a lot of connections with the with the uh, Aborigines of Australia. Think about it like this: if you really pay attention to the way white folks did things, they will teach you about how they treated the Aborigines in Australia. But that was the same game they ran on us over here. They run that. They run that same game all throughout Africa. You understand? And mm -hmm. even when you talk about Africa, there are plenty of people in Africa that have Aboriginal American bloodline in them Fact. before slavery and after slavery. Fact. You know what I'm saying? So I don't discount anybody where they are. I do agree there are certain groups of people that are the Aboriginal people of the planet. And then there are others that came in succession after that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer, you know, when they, when they talk about, you know, from the soil and the the uh, the natives and the you know, the, Just so late. that's yeah, true. I but you. <laughs> you know the theory of the theory of how we all were where we are. My theory is a little different. I won't go into that, but I'll just say like this, bro. We are most definitely more than just just you know what we've been taught. We are. We are a whole lot more, man. 
And, uh, you know, when you talk about America or the Americas, top to bottom, north, south, central, bro, you know, we got so many different artifacts and things that are older than everywhere. You know what I mean? They're older than everywhere. And, and they, they, they intentionally mislead us into believing these things are a couple thousand years old when in reality they know they don't have to answer. Or even when they try to give us a date, it's a lie because they won't let you tell the truth because they're like, no, nah, that's impossible. There's no way that this was here this long. Just look at Peru. They can't explain anything in Peru. They can't explain it. Everything in Peru is older than everything on the planet. They can't explain how they built it. They don't know how old it is. They don't know what people did it. They don't know. You <laughs> understand right. what I'm saying? Right. right. But So uh, all I'm saying is, is this. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I just wanted to point out some things. You know, just difference between the Australian Aboriginals and Africans and us. And just to show some of the connections that I see. Right. So in Africa, no one is really called black. You know, even the black Americans that they bring over there and uh, they put us in Sierra Leone. They put us in Liberia. Nigeria is a British colony where they took a lot of people from the Caribbeans. So a lot of them have uh, so-called black American blood in them. But, you know, that is just they grouped us all into one category over there and they call it Congoan. And um, they don't even call them black over there. But this black term. It's, it's, it's strictly used on us in America, and it's used on oh, yeah. Australian Aboriginals. So then when you, you study their character. history, right, you can study African history, but it's not going to give you as much understanding as when you study the Australian Aborigines uh, history. You know, just the simple fact that they have this stolen generation where they was taking Aboriginal kids and having them be raised with white families, and they had to learn the new system. The same thing they did with us with like George Washington Carver, a lot of our, you know, so-called black leaders, they, they was raised with white people because it's showing the evidence of us being stolen from our parents and placed in these white families. And a lot of us think that these white families are kidding us. Be like, oh, I got Germany. I'm French. This nigga black as hell. And he think he's a Frenchman. He got Frenchmen in him because his his ancestor was placed with a Frenchman at this time. Now, what else proves that this could have happened to us is the contraband camps that they had in the late 80s that they real, real quiet about. They even call them contraband camps when really there was concentration camps. And what they did in the southeastern part of the United States was the Union Army came in. They burned crops. They pulled pow, pow, uh, the flour and all that shit in the river. And they pushed a lot of the indigenous people from out in the rural areas where they be into these cities. One of the cities was Natchez. Natchez became flooded with black people. So they say, you know, overnight, like 130,000 black people. They put them all in this little area called the Devil's Punch Bowl was really just like a valley between two mountains. And they built yeah. the gate around it. And they let the women out that was compliant, like the ones that wanted to play ball. They let them out. Totally. But yeah. they took the men and they put them into convict leasing programs. And that's how they get all of those pictures of us in those convict leasing programs. But that's when they had took a lot of us out the contraband camps and it was using our young boys to load their weapons and enslave them into the, the union's army. But the children was taken out in place with white families at that time. Now you think about something like this happening to you. And then you think about the situation that we in as to, you know, the lack of history and culture or knowledge of self that we have. And this is something it takes something that dramatic to get us to this situation. You know, it, it's way more than somebody beating your name out of you. You know, the little Kuta Kente crazy shit that they show us. It's way more serious than that. It had to be to where these kids was detached at a young age and never were taught their true culture in history. But even if you taught it or not, you're still going to be who you're going to be. That's why you eat what you eat and you do what you do. But I just wanted to point that out. So when you look at their situation, it helps you figure out why you in the situation you in. You cannot look at nothing in Africa and help you with that. Just wanted and don't, don't that. underestimate what they did as far as uh, injecting a false history into our people's minds. You know, George Washington Carver was kidnapped as an infant. You feel me? Him and his mother. 
him and his mother were both kidnapped by slave raiders and then Sound, taken like away to another state. That's what they do you, bro. And then as they were taken to another state, the 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 the, the other owner that was in the South put an all points bulletin and go find him. They found George, but couldn't find his mother. And his mother don't look black at all. The mother was not an African woman. So in other words, they took this infant that had no identity, told him who he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? And but but the, the slave trade that, that happened here domestically, they would take young children is like it, eight right. and is under. It that and the originals and the islanders all got their right to vote when we call got our right to vote none of, none of this place and that this was a movement that took place in america and okay. australia at the same identical time they even had a martin luther king like figure that came up they had bus rides to sit-ins and they all sprung from the universities which is where they would push this socialist agenda at. they go into the universities indoctrinate the university students and then they got them to do the bus rides they did the same exact thing it came from uh the university of sydney and in here in america it was one of our universities that the bus rides first kicked off in of it was planned it was pre-planned they they it looks as if it was all pre-planned and the Martin Luther King figure was pre-planned and they are the right to vote at the same time. So that's another thing that's just weird as hell. And we didn't know. They was paralleling, paralleling our civil rights movement and we didn't even know. We didn't even know. Black Panthers and all. Good Shit point. is accurate. So yeah, real quick, y'all. I'll pull up this thing real quick. Dealing with this term since we're talking about you know aboriginals, right? And um when you look up Indian tribes, by the way, it's going to describe aboriginal in the definition. But right here, because people sometimes confuse India and the term Indian. So you see they say Indian subcontinent, Central Asia was on the left, India. Himalayas formerly sometimes used generally for Asia since 1947, specifically reference to the Republic of India. Now on the other side, and in between you see it says American Negro is the American Indian. So I'm, I'm going to segue into that, showing you this applied to the uh, Aboriginal a native inhabitant of the Americas. From at least 1553, this is 1500s, they're saying that these people are aboriginal. Mm -hmm. That they're describing mm -hmm. as the Indian. And then in parentheses, it says 1610s as an adjective. I want to point that out. So aboriginal will be the adjective in front of the word American. Reflecting Spanish and Portuguese use on the mistake notion, excuse me, mistaken notion that America was the eastern end of Asia. Oh, they knew that was a lie. <laughs> yeah, we know that they part. knew that was a lie. Bring me up to the uh, the other definition that pulls up when we pull up the American Indian one, I sent you. Can we get America is East Asia, America is West Africa, and they make it everything but being American. That's all I'm saying. America is America. And look, if you really want to get to the, you really want to get to the meat of the bones, look up what's called Los India, Los okay. India, from the Queen Elizabeth of uh, Spain. She was calling this India way before they ever called that right. India over there. I know. West Indies, right? Right. West right. Indies. West right. In, but it was before they was even calling it West Indies. It was just calling it Los India. Los India, right? And right. that's written in some written in some writing from Queen of Spain. <laughs> Isabella in the 1500, early 1500. Now look, I was ready to Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand, they're, mm -hmm. they're, when they got married, they brought their shit together. They came together. You know what I'm saying? Oh, mm -hmm. now with their two kingdoms, boom, no, that's not it. Um, it's the one that says the American Indian and it has it. You don't have to keep up. The, the, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my thought for a second. But 
All right, Queen so Isabella. Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand, when they came together, you know what I'm saying? They had a daughter. And their first daughter was Catherine. You know what I'm saying? And she married a, a, a royalty from basically England. Because I ain't going to mess up the name right now. Because I can't pull all my words together. <laughs> that, I want to line them up. I ain't going to lie. Because I've had a lot. I'm holding back. But in this situation, at that time, as you just set up, they knew exactly where they were going. That's what I'm trying to point out. To you. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. They knew. Exactly. They knew what was mapped out based off what was going on through their marriages and different maps of the trade routes that was going on. You know what I'm saying? Through not just in Spain, but in Europe. You know what I'm saying? All these people knew of the Americas being the whole world. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that not to mention that the Indians things. went. My bad, bro. I was going to say, not to mention that the Indians went to Europe and talked to them before they ever made their first journey here. Well, and Jack D. Forbes wrote about this. He wrote yes. a whole book about it. I'm going to give a shout out real quick to Ishmael, who brought this to my attention, I think, a week or two ago. And me and him having a conversation since you just brought that up about how Columbus had went to Ireland. Right. Ish, you said this to me. And, 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 um, and like 20 years before he came to the Americas, see Native Americans in Ireland. Isn't that what you mean? You had a conversation about the other day, Ish? Absolutely. Yeah. He met them in Galloway, Ireland. That's correct. In 1478. Mm. So he knew before he came in 1492 that there was people over here trading over there and doing things. You know what I mean? That trade worldwide was already being done. You know what I mean? It's just at this time we're dealing with politics and we're giving a story as if this is some new world stuff when that's not really what took, took place when we understand like the Game of Thrones game being played. You know what I'm saying? So the Aboriginal unfortunately took the bottom of the stick in, their, in the empires that they were controlling in different things. Is that it? He click on it. It's not open it up. That's it right there. Right. It's, it's just showing a Gmail and the oh, subject. Oh my. You gotta click on the link real quick. Hopefully, this is it. Oh no, what happens? Hold on. My bad, y'all. So, um, yeah. Overall, this this definition I'm trying to pull up has another one showing that what I'm trying to pull up right now is dealing with the definition of the American Indian and a certain book describing that it's a Negro. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to pull it up, mm -hmm. but. This one where he just pulled up, I still can use this though. Still, it's still reference to it. Indian tribe, a separate, distinct community or body of the Aboriginal Indian race of men found in the United States. Such a tribe, situated within the boundaries of a state, exercising the powers of government and sovereignty under the national government and deemed political a state. So this term Aboriginal is being used when we eat, even. At, Talk about what is an Indian tribe. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to Malcolm X, you know, because you know he knew who the Aboriginal was. And he made sure that you knew that the Aboriginal definitely could not be you no know, definitely a dark skinned person, no matter where you went. You know what I'm saying? He pointed that out before he died. Just shout out to him for that. Hey, so, truth be told, the same thing goes for Indians. The whole reason why they even called them Indians is because they had dark skin. That's the only point. reason why they even called them Indians. Crazy part about it is, which I'm going to the next time I do this, and if you want to join me, y'all can, you know, is the part two of this, because it's, 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 this is a journey conversation. You know what I'm saying? Because we said we're talking about Aboriginals. So these are original people, because Aboriginal really is the original people. So we can talk about the Aboriginal. Thank you. There he is. You see this? You see this? Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And I know you meant no harm, Brother Rob. But you know this dark skin when they when you say the aboriginals was Negroes and then people say hey no yeah they had dark skin that's so that they can play the Mongo on into the argument lots of people have dark skin you know no right. we were we were we had they had more than dark skin they was dark skin they were playing football they were smoking cigarettes rapping and talking <laughs> shit I'm just saying <laughs> let's keep it real. Nah. Well, yeah. you know, it's two different it's two different it's two different sets of the mongrels if you want to be specific because I believe that you talk about if you believe in that Behringer straight theory, those if that was true and they did come, they also had to be very negro. They could not have been the ones that we're looking at today. Right. Because them right. folks 
Right. It's, we, it's within a 10,000 year period. They're not even the same people. We're not calling them Mongols. We're calling them Negroes. Though. So if they can't, there was Negro, <laughs> we were just going to say there was Negroes. They wasn't <laughs> Mongol looking right. Negroes. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, I, I never even African American. I, I just said it because you said it. Yeah, I know, right, I know, right. Yeah, you, you know, know it's all, uh, they all mixed together, though. We we know that they had different, you know, different groups of people come through I, and, I just said and mix if they were, in if they came with the from aboriginal. Asia. If they came from Asia at that time, then there was Negroes, and then they would have been, you know, the Philippines are considered as America. You know what I mean? That those islands in that um, environment, the ecosystem matches America, don't match Asia. So uh, they like to always point out that you know the correlations in the Philippines, and then they try to drag this whole thing to Asia. Now nah, that's America, man. That's America. So. That's still America. They came from America over. Even in <laughs> Asia, even in Asia, even in China, when you look in their caves, they got black Absolutely. Negro people. Yeah. You know what I'm they, saying? Their they, Buddha, yeah. the first Buddha, their first, their first dynasty was not, all Negro. Not, not, that's you dark skinned people. That ain't the Negro. That's the dark skinned people. Now. Okay. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, you might be right about that. You know, I see to me when they say Negro, Negro really just means a conquered people. That's the reason why they was even calling us Negroes. Wow. Just it, and, when I say a, Negro, I, I think that you conquered. I, I think of the only people in the world that had that on their birth certificate. That's what I think of. Only oh, yeah, I heard that yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, yo, wait, wait. Since you're saying that, I got it on the screen. Why y'all saying this, right? The word Oxford English Dictionary. The word nigger. Now and adjective. <laughs> it says that ER up in there. <laughs> yeah, the, hard, the hard, hard ER. The hard ER. That we don't like. <laughs> What do you know that you fight the word, oh, man. word? How you say it? You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. It says, A, a dark skinned person of any origin in early U.S. Mm -hmm. use, use, usually in reference to the American Indians. Right. So, right. there you go. Come up, come back to the red screen. That's one of the big that's put there. Because we have to understand based off that definition right there, right? I am, that's not my definition. That's not my opinion, right? That's what they described right. it as right. in their book, Oxford, mm -hmm. right? We know who the Negro and the Aboriginal is when it comes to the American Negro and American Aboriginal. Exactly. It's synonymous exactly. speaking. Can we all agree on that part? Hey, look, they know yeah. it too. Look at the look at the look at the laws. Look at the look at the slavery laws. They had every time you mention Indians, you enter, you you mention Negroes. Every time you mention Negroes, you mention Indians. They in both of each other's laws. The story, From Virginia the and South and North Carolina. Right. The story is even parallel. Yeah. There was they were scan Negroes with lynching and running them out the south into Oklahoma and Kentucky at the same time the Indian Removal Act was going on, and they were scan Indians out the south into Oklahoma and Kentucky. So it's the same story, you know. When you go to the Mississippi State Museum, right? I went in there and they went to hand me the little tickets for the Black History Museum. I, I don't want to see my people get hit with water hoses. I'm here for the history of Mississippi. And what they do is they come in and they tell you about the prehistoric history of the Indians in Mississippi. And then the next thing you know, you see black people picking cotton and bales and Mississippi flourishing from, they don't even switch the story up in the museum. They just let you know. They just telling you the history of Mississippi, all the Indians disappear and turn into Negroes like that. Right. And then they telling you, they telling you about how the cotton boom helped Mississippi. It's just that fact. I thought I had missed something. I sat there and watched the exhibit again. I was like, damn, man, I must have missed some shit because now we talking about <laughs> Africans and cotton. I'm like, in the main crop, we, we moved into tobacco. You know? Real so this cotton thing. It's tobacco. He said right. tobacco. <laughs> I'm, well, yeah, I'm just saying, I had to get you real quick, Black Mac. You know, we both Mac. I, I caught that. You said tobacco. Wow. You didn't say tobacco. You're, I just want to make you sure would you have, know, have, I caught that. You a, a piece of tobacco to Africa, an African wouldn't have known what it was. But if you'd have took it to Australia, they would have knew. If you'd have took it on the Pacific Islands, they would have knew. They recognize that. They know what that plan is. They know the properties of it. So that's you know. real, bro. Yeah. I, I, again, um, 
And you know, I, I got a little special situation. Shout out Music Media Lounge for letting me run over. You know what I mean? Because you know, again, this panel discussion tonight. Um, you know, I come here every Sunday to do my my podcast show with them. You know, we live on their part on their podcast as well. They're listening in, people tapping in. So shout out to Music Media Lounge and tapping to them. You get a chance. They got some gut things going out. Good things. Good pro programming every day of the week. But as we're here right now, 8 to 11, I'm a little bit old, like I said. And, um, you know, before we get out of here, I just want to give credit for what it's doing. I want to thank each one of you guys for coming in and doing what y'all doing with me tonight. And uh, I'm going to bring you guys back. I always tell you that. You know what I'm saying? When it's time for the conversations, I know who I can go to. You know what I mean? And each, each one of you guys always have been there for me. And I, and us. You know what I mean? The Thomas Party, BSB, Thriller mm-hmm. Campaign, and everything that we do. You know what I mean? Locally or nationally. And I appreciate y'all. I want to make sure I tell y'all that. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank y'all again. Keep doing what y'all doing though, and then we're gonna plug in. We're gonna do. We're gonna do this again because, the, like I said, I didn't get to go into the Aboriginals from Ireland, Aboriginals from England, Aboriginals from Britain, the Aboriginals from Germany, the Aboriginal. Because you know, I brought this up last week with Benjamin Franklin and his address to mankind in 1751. You know what I'm saying? And how he said who was over here at that time. The original people that he's seen. And I can go off the Federal Directive 15 CDC and what they des- what they described as white. And the word white has the word original in it. So when we deal with the word original, we have to deal with who are the original people of those lands as well. They can't be dismissed. We can't describe and act like this Negro that's been de- declassified is not from other areas and not have royalty bloodline running from these different areas as well. I don't want to acknowledge any of that in the mixtures that took place. I ain't discriminating from that Aboriginal understanding. You know what I mean? So again, I thank y'all brothers tonight. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this again. There's gonna be a part two to this. I hope y'all join me for that. For join us for that. We're gonna do this again. Like I said, which y'all anything y'all want to close out with before y'all leave us? Brother Mac, I want to thank you for uh, having me on tonight. I want to thank Brother Mac, also thank Brother Rob, as well as just the autonomous party in general. Thank you all for, you know, again, inviting us to your platform, for us to impart information, as well as to learn from one another. So I thought that was a very good topic of what you brought up. And I'm just honored to be a part of that. So I do thank you so much, dear brother. Hey, man, it's a, it's a social vibe, but we got to have some autonomous conversations. Agree to disagree sometimes. You know what I mean? Money Corner with me from the beginning. And even me and him going to disagree sometimes. It might be something small. We're going to work that out because it's a bigger picture that we're really going for. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's family to me. That's so right. trust me. That's going to be worked out. We don't let things like that come between us. But still, you know what I mean? Misunderstandings happen, even in conversation. But that's why in this conversation that I have with y'all, from all, all y'all different areas you come from, we have something in common. And that's what we're coming together for. That's what we got to pay attention to. You know what I mean? And that's what my goal is, to focus on that rather than the things that we don't have in common. You know what I mean? So, again, I thank you just like you thank me. And um, Appreciate we're going to play some music when we get out of here. And um, tap in the autonomousparty.com, the W's in front. Next week, you know, we um, we got a social club experience going on right now that I haven't really gone into like that. Cause I did with the show, but now you know we do have a membership side of this situation, and we're doing some uh, great things that I'm gonna uh, put out publicly in a minute. But I got a group of people right now that's very important that I want to shout out in Clubhouse. There's a lot of us develop a lot of things together, and I wouldn't be having a lot of these things, wouldn't be inspired unless I had this conversation with these group of people. You know what I'm saying? So all of them got to get these sunflowers as well. And um, we got a lot of big things pop coming from this group of people I'm speaking about right now. So I got to give them a shout out too. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, things is coming. Um, shout out Opie. You know what I mean? What he does with the geology of his podcast. Make sure you go check him out. You know what I mean? Shout out Tanari as well, what she does with geology. Shout out Caramel. She was supposed to be on here tonight, but she'll be here next week. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have, she does a lot of things to keep us organized and the classes that we got going on in the clubhouse with the Thomas party. Um, who I'm, who I'm missing, God is great. I mean, you know, I, I had a long shout out Jasper, Jasper. Monte, 
Monte, um, Twins. Twins. Lashana, um, Ty. Bree. Bree. Back for us, Maya. Back for us, Maya. Help me out because we got a lot Sherry. of people. Shout out, Sherry. Lorraine. Shout out to the whole clubhouse. You know what I mean? You know, you know what it is. It's you, you part of that vibe. You know what I'm talking about when I shout out these people because of what we're doing. And shout out to everybody on Facebook as well that follow the autonomous party. You know what I'm saying? And support what we do. You know what I'm saying? And what we're trying to do in our different communities that we're all in. You know what I mean? These conversations are needed, but we want solutions to them. Not just conversations. We want solutions. Like we're going to work towards together, right? We're going to get out of here. So that's what we need. On that note, I need that needed back, man. Can I can I hear that yeah, song? I, I know I need that song. I need it one more time from that Migos off his new album, um, off the new album, Culture Three. I'm gonna play that getting out of here tonight. Um, I need it, you know what I'm saying? That's what we need, you know what I'm saying? And I want to keep that on the focus of what we're doing. I see y'all next week, Sunday. Matt Blaine, the American on Facebook, King Moves Rob on Facebook, Ishmael, First Tribe Nation, right? That's right. Did I say it right? That's right. Okay. I mean, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm slithered sometimes on lookers, so I want to be disrespectful. No, for real though. Thank you, brother. Shout out all them different sources for different content these brothers are putting out. Follow what they're doing. Uh, again, theatomusparty.com. We out here. Appreciate everybody. Tap in. Peace. One love. Peace. Peace.